It's time for Dave 101. All right, you know that old saying that if it's too good to be true, it probably isn't. That's the feeling I get with a relative newcomer to ufology, a lady by the name of Anjali. Anjali is claiming to be an experiencer who a number of months ago was able to have an ET download type contact where she was visited that there are going to be these aliens meeting up with her and a chosen panel in the Mojave Desert in the middle of a cave where they are going to give a bunch of secrets out. So much so that she believes this, that she is putting this panel together. All we know is that it's going to happen sometime in 2021, and the aliens are going to show themselves. Have we heard this before? Look, as an experiencer myself, I know that there are going to be people coming out. Come on, Dave. You believe in Samantha Moet. You believe in your own stories. You're always talking about the woo. You always want this kind of stuff. How can you turn your back on someone who is an experiencer? Now, there's a big difference here between the experiencer and the production side of what is going on. Anjali, we know, is apparently someone who used to work for the, for the Department of National Defense in the United States. What her role is, we really don't know. There's some confusion over that. We know that on Twitter, a, a gentleman named Steve Cambion from Truth Seekers on YouTube actually called her out because he found out that she was allegedly writing a book and they were taking pre-order sales. And then on Twitter, to one of his responses to a question, she says, I'm not writing a book. And yet the information was right there. We also know that she has a, an entire team behind her pushing her towards this level. What sounds so wrong about this? What sounds so grievous? Really nothing. But I always like to tell our listeners this. Take your time to sit back, relax, and gather the entire information. UFOlogy is fun, but there's also a lot of people out there that have no problem trying to trick you into believing what they have. Take, for instance, the To The Stars Academy. I took a lot of heat over the first three years before Luis Elizondo, Chris Mellon, and Steve Justice left, and I've been able to confirm for myself that a lot of my suspicions were true. When you have a pressless press conference to introduce the TTSA team, why? What are you hiding from the press? When you have videos from the U.S. Navy with your logo on them, why wasn't that questioned? There were a number of instances with the two of the Stars Academy that I didn't feel comfortable backing. So why don't I feel comfortable backing Anjali and her claims of meeting aliens? Now, for the record, I will say I do believe she's an experiencer. I am also a firm believer that if you are a multiple experiencer yourself, those who are will understand what I'm saying, you can literally by photograph or by video or by person tell whether or not someone is BSing you or telling you the truth about their experiences. You just know. But holding a press conference in Washington, D.C., with no major media there, very few people surrounding her, most of the people surrounding her were members of her own team, and giving a speech about extraterrestrials is not a way to win over the community. 
it sounds like a production, maybe for a documentary or a book that she is allegedly not writing. That is the issue that I have. When it comes to experiencers, these are very personal experiences that you already know the minute you go public that the majority of people out there are not going to believe you. They are not going to believe that you have had encounters with extraterrestrials. They are not going to believe that you have been able to summon in UFOs. They are not going to believe that you have seen what you have seen or claim to see. We have all heard the same arguments over and over and over again. Were you on drugs? Were you drunk? Were you on any sorts of medication or hallucinogens? This is what experiencers go through. Never mind the I don't believe you skeptic crowd who thinks that anything you're saying, that you're whack and that you are absolutely full of derogatory imagination. But when it comes to Anjali, the way she's handled herself on social media, the way she's handled herself on the public, the press conference, the video cameras. If I'm calling a press conference for Spaced Out Radio, this is what I'm doing. Number one, I'm putting out a press release to every major media outlet, newspaper, television, websites, radio. Number two, I'm trying to get interviews pre-press conference to line up or post-press conference as well to line up to talk about this subject. Not on podcasts that have maybe 30, 40 people. I'm talking radio stations, talk radio stations that have four, 500,000, 100,000, 50,000, 10,000 listeners or more. I am trying to get my message out properly with etiquette, with pizzazz. I'm not sitting down, and granted, she may have some health issues, which led to her being wheeled into that press conference. But I'm not sitting down in Washington, D.C. with a bunch of supporters and very few true media, true real media, to go over my story. Experiencers are one thing. Those who make it very profound are another. Those who try to, to enhance their popularity, we've seen it before. We saw it with Stan Romanek, where a lot of people believed his videos, as well as his experiences with these gray aliens and alleged government people coming in to steal the siding of his house, steal his webcams, steal whatever they could. And then all of a sudden he was caught mocking and fraudulently creating evidence. We've seen it with others. We see it with certain YouTube channels out there who claim CGI videos of UFOs are real. And people, over 2 million of them, watch this channel in order to get their UFO fix. And they believe it. We are dealing with people here who want to believe so badly. They want to have that experience if they have it already. They want to see UFOs and they want to see aliens become part of everyday conversation. This is an important topic for them, much like it is a sports fan cheering for their home team or the team that they grew up loving. That's just how important this subject is. But when you take the subject and you put it on a pedestal, something as controversial as ET contact, you're really putting yourself out to a bunch of criticism, to a bunch of hate. And that's a dangerous sign. We do it here on Spaced Out Radio. I get critique all the time by people saying, I don't believe you. 
I don't believe you had a Bigfoot encounter. I don't believe you had ghosts. I don't believe that you are telling the truth about what happened in the forest with Samantha Mowat and the alien or Carl, the alien at your window. It's fine. You don't have to believe me. But the experiencer should not try to make a spectacle of themselves. There is a proper way of doing things. And for the experiencers, Anjali has a, a has come out publicly to not a lot of fanfare. All right? Not a lot of fanfare, not a lot of love. And she has the ability to take all of this that experiencers have built up on. And if she is wrong with the aliens coming into that cave and meeting her team physically, it could set back everything us experiencers have been trying to build for, which is credibility. Experiencers already do not have credibility. Because all we have is an anecdotal story that you can choose as the public to believe or not to believe. We see it in every genre underneath the paranormal umbrella. It's a dangerous scope. What I would have liked to have seen Anjali do is pick the team, get them to meet the aliens, photograph them, take some selfies, record them and then walk out of that to a press conference saying, this is the message. This is what we found. These are what the scientists have confirmed who were there with us. Rather than sitting in front of the Lincoln Memorial and talking about her experiences, she would have got more press going on shows like Coast to Coast, like Jimmy Church, like Spaced Out Radio here, than she did at her own press conference, where real questions could have been asked. And that's the danger of it. To me, this has a, the same potential as what Dr. John Bindernagel told me about Sasquatch in 2015. The late Dr. Bindernagel told me point blank that he absolutely hated the word squatch. Why? Because the terminology had literally turned into a laughing stock within the scientific community that he was trying for 70 years to get to take the story of Sasquatch legitimately and take the evidence legitimately. All because of one word, he felt his research of 70 years, seven decades, was ruined. Squatch. That's why we ban Squatch on this show. So when it comes to experiencers, I feel that this entire production that Anjali is putting on, that at least claiming to put on, is going to go down that exact same road. Now, she has appeared on some podcasts and shows. Okay, I have not, for the record, personally talked to her. I have not reached out to her to come on Spaced Out Radio. We are still, as a team, debating whether or not we want to do that. But like I said, I am not questioning her experiences. I am not questioning whether or not she had alien contact. I am not questioning whether or not her story is real. I do believe she is an experiencer. What I do not believe is the crowd that is around her pushing her to make some very questionable decisions that could absolutely cause a lot of chaos for the experiencers who are already out there struggling to tell people about what they've gone through. I think of Allison Yellownee. I think of Karina Sables. I think of the Andreasen affair, Betty and Barney Hill, and the fight that Kathleen Martin, the, her, their niece, has gone through for decades trying to defend them. The, we've seen what Travis Walton has gone through over the last few months with people now calling his story fake. The experiencers, whether you like it or not, are a part of the UFO community. 
The scientists don't have anything to study or any leads to study without the experiencers telling them what they've gone through, what they've seen, or what they have experienced, whether it's through extraterrestrials and any sort of implantation, or whether it's viewing a downed craft that has crashed in the middle of the desert in New Mexico. That is your thought of the Dave. Well, not your thought of the Dave. That is your Dave 101 for this week. Let's get to the news.